Good morning to everybody. Can you see my screen? Can you see my presentation? Yes, yes, yes. We see Good it start. very well. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay, so after the first half of the morning, it's time to jump into the third step of therapy, the one in which we will see the general recommendation for the surgical procedures. And thanks to our colleagues before, we acknowledge that phase two is effective if provided uh, adequately. But sometimes uh, it's our experience that uh, the endpoints of treatment uh, cannot be achieved. So there are some occasions in which uh, the complete removal of calculus uh, is uh, complicated with some anatomical factors and we cannot achieve uh, our true endpoint of treatment that are not, uh, having no deep pockets uh, more than six millimeter or pockets more than four with bleeding on probing. So sometimes uh, surgery is uh, recommendable. So let's say that if surgery is needed, well, if surgery is really needed, let's see what is the level of care required for the management of the deep residual pockets uh, with the factors of complexity that are the, intrabone, the presence of intrabony defects and the presence of rotation involvement. So let's say briefly, which is uh, uh, the level of care required in order to manage cases like this. And the recommendation given by our EFP specialist uh, start with this premise that uh, surgical treatment is effective but frequently is complex. So it is recommendable that, uh, that this is provided by dentists that have uh, an additional specific training or specialists. Of course, we don't have uh, the possibility uh, of having uh, literature supporting this statement, even though uh, the grade of the recommendation is the strongest. We, it's our experience that uh, periodontal surgery in most cases can be really challenging. And above all, uh, this, uh, um, um, this uh, happens in uh, the so-called complex cases. Here we have a definition by Professor Corman and Giannobile uh, in which complex cases are defined as cases which do not respond to standard therapy, cases in which uh, we have uh, disease modifiers that uh, uh, contribute to the systemic inflammatory burden, or cases in which uh, surgical advanced approaches are required. These factors of complexity uh, have been properly operationalized by the new classification in uh, 2017. And uh, as a rule of thumb, we can say uh, that uh, most of uh, periodontal cases, uh, let's say the 80%, are uh, um, manageable by a linear logic in which uh, um, our effort uh, uh, is, not, uh, uh, is not full. We can resolve most of cases by uh, applying uh, uh, simple strategies. On the other hand, uh, another 20% of the cases require um, a much higher competence. So the future of our profession should uh, uh, be directed toward uh, patient stratification in which uh, uh, the target population could be uh, um, directed toward um, a, spe um, a specific treatment uh, um, based on their needs. And uh, as everything, and we have seen, uh, especially in this uh, particularly critical moment uh, of the uh, oral pandemic, everything starts from the education. But generally, uh, dental schools are not uh, structured in order to provide uh, uh, advanced training uh, to undergra undergraduate students. So EFP, uh, since uh, the, last, uh, um, <clears throat> the last half of the last century, has uh, started uh, the EFP accredited PG programs in which continuous dental education are, uh, is uh, provided to students from all around the world and in which competence and proficiencies are uh, uh, provided in order to manage uh, complex cases. So. Uh, what uh, uh, we will have to see in the, in the next future, we hope, uh, is uh, uh, a more integrated network in which periodontists, physicians, general dentists and hygienists are highly connected and cooperative in order to have always the patient at the center of his net. This, so let's jump to the second recommendation. 
we see that uh, sometimes uh, uh, the specific uh, training uh, cannot be um, uh, cannot be achieved by patients because uh, of some inherent factors. And so the, the minimum level of care must be provided to patients in order to treat their periodontitis that we all know it's a highly prevalent and globally um, incident disease. So the recommendation given by our EFP experts uh, is that uh, as a minimum requirement, uh, uh, scaling and root planing with or without access flap uh, is highly recommendable and uh, uh, needs to be uh, supplemented by a frequent program of supportive periodontal therapy. Uh, for uh, this statement, we have the supporting literature uh, okay, that can be found uh, in the review by Professor Graziani, and the grade of recommendation in this case is also a strong A. Uh, regarding modified uh, Whitman and conservative surgery, we all know that uh, this technique has evolved uh, uh, very much since the, its beginning. And uh, from the review of 2012 uh, by Professor Graziani, we have acknowledged that uh, this kind of technique uh, is able to provide uh, um, results uh, um, really uh, effective in terms of cal gain, uh, especially with the introduction of the minimal invasive techniques. This kind uh, of treatment, uh, open flap access, is uh, uh, also uh, effective uh, for uh, dealing with uh, um, forcation involvement. From this review uh, of 2015, it's been uh, um, uh, highlighted how um, access flap can provide um, um, melioration in horizontal cal and vertical cal even though not always uh, these uh, uh, improvements uh, are um, clinically relevant. So we can uh, see that with conservative surgery, uh, it is possible to achieve results that, uh, frankly speaking, uh, they are comparable now with the one obtained uh, with the classical techniques of uh, uh, periodontal regeneration or reconstruction. At the same time, we have to acknowledge the fact that uh, uh, the global um, healthcare systems, especially in our dentistry fields, suffer from uh, many inequalities. And uh, um, most of the times, uh, availability and access to advanced specialistic care and even periodontal surgical procedures uh, uh, as an open flap debridement is not always achievable. And this has been as, as well underlined by uh, this important series on Lancet uh, that states that uh, uh, the global public health uh, challenge uh, posed by uh, dental problems such as caries and periodontal disease uh, is something that uh, urge a radical call for action in the uh, next future. So keeping in consideration uh, um, the aforementioned reasons, uh, we have to uh, try to make our efforts to simplify our treatment plan. And we have uh, also literature stating that uh, um, open uh, flap debridement uh, compared with the non-surgical procedure is, uh, uh, effect, is uh, much effective uh, in the short term uh, when we analyze the results on the long term we see that this difference tend to uh, equalize. And so um, we, uh, we also have other papers in which, uh, such as this one by Koenig, in which, uh, um, <clears throat> in which it has been uh, compared surgical procedure compared to uh, repeated scaling and replaning, in which we see that uh, uh, at the end, the results in terms of PD reduction and cal gain can be uh, quite uh, uh, comparable. Um, furthermore, uh, we have to acknowledge that the cost effectiveness provided by uh, repeated scaling and non-surgical therapy uh, is much higher and uh, we have uh, uh, cases, uh, but everybody of us, I believe, have cases in which uh, the, um, the potential for a repeated uh, non-surgical therapy can be, um, can be expressed its, uh, its full potential. We see as well this radiograph from cases uh, treated uh, in our department only by non-surgical therapy in which the remineralization of these defects uh, has been achieved. Uh, coming to the last uh, uh, recommendation, uh, let's see what, 
what is uh, the importance of the adequate self-perform oral hygiene before performing surgical periodontal treatment. Everybody of us would like to put our blade in a tissue like this compared to the one that we've seen before. So the EFP expert recommend, uh, it goes without saying, that uh, it has to be, patients has to be treated surgically, both periodontally and uh, by implant treatment, uh, only afterwards an adequate level of self-perform oral hygiene has been achieved and above all maintained. Even in this case, it is an, an expert opinion and the grade of the recommendation is the strongest. Uh, this uh, recommendation uh, put its basis on some pivotal studies conducted by the Gothenburg School in the late uh, 70s, uh, and above all, the one uh, by Sture Niemann, Jan Linde, and Ben Grossling, in which uh, uh, the five uh, treatment options, uh, surgical and non surgical, were compared. And uh, uh, it was shown that uh, uh, if uh, um, if uh, an adequate plug control could not be achieved, uh, no, <clears throat> not even one of these surgical techniques uh, have been able to provide, um, have been able to prevent the recurrences. On the other hand, uh, another uh, longitudinal investigation by the same group demonstrated that uh, plug and plug control performed uh, or professionally and uh, domiciliary. Uh, has um, a serious dose-dependent effect uh, on the healing outcomes. Of course, the results obtained by this paper have been achieved uh, in uh, not so much realistic conditions because patients were recalled uh, every two weeks for a two-year period for professional tooth cleaning. But uh, the concept has been highlighted in a real clear, clear manner. So the question we have to pose to ourselves is what is adequate? What is the adequate plug control that we want for our patient in order to give a, a clear uh, recommendation? Uh, of course, a, a, a net, a, a clear threshold could not be um, provided, but we have to based on uh, some, some uh, expert opinions given by the most knowledgeable uh, um, most knowledgeable clinicians uh, uh, on this topic and uh, uh, that have set the 15% of full mouth plus score as uh, uh, a threshold for, uh, for entering surgical treatment. Of course, everybody of us know that uh, uh, despite the 15% is acceptable at the uh, general level, at the site level, we want to have tissues that are free from inflammation and free from plaque. With this, uh, I thank you, I say grazie to everybody for the attention, and uh, I want to uh, thank also my colleagues for their help in, in, in uh, doing this presentation and our professor Emetti.